Hi, in this video, we are gonna have a look at the GraphQL mesh package. And more specifically, we'll be using this as a gateway between multiple GraphQL APIs. If you haven't heard of the GraphQL mesh, this is a project by the Guild, and it's absolutely fantastic at co automatically code generating a SDK, as well as integrating many APIs under one hood. Now these APIs can be OpenAPI, Swagger, gRPC, GraphQL, Whatever you decide to use, you can just query GraphQL and you can configure the mesh to make the subsequent requests to all of the individual APIs that lie beneath them. These APIs can be authenticated, unauthenticated, public, private, your own or a third party. You can just use the GraphQL mesh to transfer all of these requests for you. It's simply magic and it's really nice to use. But in this video, we'll have a look at using a few different GraphQL APIs. I hope you enjoy and let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or you'd like to see more videos of the GraphQL mesh. GraphQL mesh acts as a proxy to your existing APIs. We'll need to install a few dependencies to use GraphQL mesh. We'll need to install the CLI and also the GraphQL transformer, as well as the runtime and GraphQL itself. Inside the root of your project, create the file .meshrc.yml. This is the configuration file for GraphQL mesh. It is inside of here, you'll define all of your sources and the handler types and any transforms or prefixes that you need to configure for each of your APIs. So the first API that we'll use will be the countries API from Trevor Blades. He will define the GraphQL handler endpoint. Now inside of package.json, let's add a simple script to run the mesh dev command. With that added, we can then run npm run dev and that will start the mesh server on localhost 4000. If we open localhost 4000, you'll see we have graphical. And inside of here, we have our schema populated with the same schema that comes from the countries API. We can run a query to get all of our countries and we can pass in any of the valid arguments of that API. And those will be successfully executed against the underlying handler. You can see we can run any of the other queries such as continents, countries, languages, and many others. And all of these are relayed to the API underneath. Now let's go ahead and add the shopping cart GraphQL API cartql. We'll add the handler, we'll add the endpoint to this, and then we'll run the mesh dev server. With our dev server running, we can see inside of the explorer that we have some new queries and mutations. Mesh also supports mutations and subscriptions, as well as queries. So we'll run a mutation, and then we'll run another query to get our cart and get the grand total. Now we've got the grand total, we'll go ahead and grab the list of countries from the countries API. Then we'll go a step further and filter those countries where the currency is the same currency of our cart. And lastly, we'll go ahead and grab all of the continents. So this shows that we are making multiple requests to multiple GraphQL APIs, and it's returned to us through the GraphQL mesh package as a gateway. How about we step this up and now use the open API or Swagger to make a request to Stripe. Stripe doesn't have a GraphQL API, but their REST API can easily be accessed using the GraphQL mesh and the appropriate transformer plugin. So let's have a look at what Stripe give us and how we connect, connect that. So this is the Stripe open API specification on GitHub. We can use the file to the open API specification inside of our GraphQL mesh configuration. If we have a look at the GraphQL mesh source handler for the open API standard, we can see that we need to install a new dependency. Then we need to give it to our list of sources and provide the source. And in this case, we'll provide the JSON file to GitHub. So I'm gonna go ahead now and install the GraphQL mesh open API plugin. Then inside of here, I will go ahead and add a name for Stripe and then we'll specify the handler. The handler will be of the open API type and we'll need to give it a source. If we head to GitHub and click to view the raw file, we can take this URL and pass it to the source inside of our meshrc config. 
Then what we'll need to do is specify the base URL. And this is to tell the GraphQL mesh where the API for Stripe belongs. In this case, it belongs at api.stripe.com. Then we'll need to provide a operation headers argument, and this will take in our authorization in the form of a bearer token. Here we can copy the secret key that we need for our project. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this inside of here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run npm run dev. Now you can see that the GraphQL mesh has generated all of these queries for Stripe. If we go ahead and run a query to get customers, we'll get the name and the email for all of our customers. Now, if we head on over to Stripe and we go to the list of customers and we edit one of these customers, and in this case, let's go ahead and add some metadata. We'll save this metadata. Then we'll go back to graphical and update our query to get customers. And this time we'll include the metadata field, which is of type JSON. And you'll see that has queried Stripe directly using the API key that we provided. And there we have it. We have a GraphQL gateway using GraphQL mesh to handle communicating to GraphQL APIs and other types such as OpenAPI or Swagger. The GraphQL mesh website has all of the documentation and configuration options that you need to launch this in production. The GraphQL mesh configuration also shows how you can handle things like type collision and how you can transform or rename queries, mutations and subscriptions. To check out the documentation, I'll leave a link in the description on how you can get started. And if you'd like to see more about the GraphQL mesh, please leave a comment below.